I want to start by talking actually about your company, Andreas. That's the reason why you're joining us. Uh, and uh, you made some headlines uh, uh, yesterday with Soundtrack Your Brand as it's the first product uh, which uh, uh, sort of offers a Spotify with a commercial license. It's called Spotify Business. And, uh, you know, we want to hear all about uh, the product and also your first funding round. So can you tell us a little bit about your uh, background and how the company got started first? Absolutely. So uh, I met a guy called Daniel back in 2006 and he tried to recruit me to a company that he was uh, building then called Spotify and nobody knew nothing about it. Right. And uh, it was until 2008 when I joined him and started working with, with him and you, you obviously know where the story leads to and, <laughs> yeah. and today they just announced that they're now 10 million paying sales which is really amazing. But over all these years uh, doing business development for Spotify, there was one question that we always got. How can I use Spotify in my commercial environment? Could be bars, hotels, retail brands and fashion and so on and so forth. And I was always the one to say no. Uh, we had a huge focus on doing telecom deals and still they still do. And there was also a huge focus on doing hardware deals, getting Spotify into mobile phones and cars and stereos and so on and so forth. But once you said no about a hundred times or so to big brands, yeah. you sort of grow an affinity. So how do we actually start saying yes to this? Because there is an opportunity. So that was one, one thing that we had. The other one was that uh, we sort of saw where is the industry going next? Um, it might be premature to say that we crack the code for consumer music and digital. There's still a lot to be done there. But the next frontier could definitely be in business to business or background music. Right. And, and the third uh, component in this puzzle was that uh, my co-founder, Ola Sars, uh, who was also a co-founder of Beats Music, uh, we've been trying to recruit each other for quite some time. And we got together last year and we started chatting about what was the next big thing. And when, when we said background music and how brands and fans can connect through music, we just said that's something we need to do. Yeah. And um, that was about a year ago. And with, since then, we funded the company, uh, founded the company. Uh, we got together in a partnership with, with my previous employer, Spotify, and we launched yesterday. That's awesome. And so, uh, you know, talking about... Uh what uh, you know if people uh, that are listening to the show or watching the show uh, don't know exactly what what a standard spotify subscription consists of and or covers and what your company covers can, can you tell us the difference in a, in a bit more detail uh, as to what the commercial license entails absolutely and i think that it's very very important to understand that spotify has always been a consumer service right and that means that you can use Spotify for your personal use. But as soon as you want to play music in a commercial venue, in a commercial setting, such as a bar or cafe or hairdresser or up until up, up to retail stores and so on and so forth, you actually need a B2B license. Right. And that is something that Spotify have not had. And we are the first one who can provide that license. So you can use Spotify fully licensed and legal in your commercial environment. That's, that's, that's really, really interesting because uh, uh, I, I'm sure I've seen uh, stores and bars that use Spotify, but uh, I guess that was, is, is, not, uh, is not legal. So it'd be great if they could actually do that uh, uh, through the app. And, uh, and one of the things that's interesting actually is that you've sort of reworked, you worked uh, uh, with the actual Spotify client, but you've added a few new features, right? Absolutely. So what we found after having spoken to several hundreds of small and uh, business owners and smaller stores is that when they use Spotify, which is then actually not legal, but when they do, uh, they have a huge problem by having to swap playlists all the time. So I, we actually built a music schedule that allows the store to plan their whole week. And it's a, you, I mean, it's a, spot, a normal Spotify interface, but we also add on a normal calendar interface to right. it. So you can basically schedule your, your playlist. You can have smoother music in the morning, more lively music in the afternoon, or when the kids come in at McDonald's on a Sunday afternoon, we play family-oriented music. If it's a late Friday night, you, you know the music that goes with that. So the music schedule really helps our customers to plan their week and not being busy with changing music all the time. Yeah. They actually have stuff to sell. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And Christian, from, from your end, uh, do you feel like, uh, of course, the service is, uh, is uh, limited to Sweden uh, right now, but uh, do you feel like in the US uh, this is something that uh, uh, there's a demand for and could catch on? I definitely think business owners um, 
outside of Los Angeles and New York and some of the hubs that are a little more knowledgeable about music law, um, I've had friends that run businesses and have no idea they play music in their businesses and they, they don't know that they need to license it. <laughs> they don't know yeah. <laughs> that they need licenses from all of the PROs. So I think this would be exciting for them and it really matches the consumer model that Spotify already started as far as really, you know, that I think it would be of great interest to business owners because it's easy. It's yeah. very simple for them to execute and I, I like the idea of the playlist so that they can plan everything out and not have to worry about it. Yeah, yeah, and of course you have any questions, uh, guys, for Andreas, uh, fire away. And uh, Alejandro, on your end, do, do, you know, is uh, uh, do shops in, in Colombia also require a license to play music? And if so, do you think that, that this could be an interesting proposition for them? Oh yeah, definitely. I think it's very important for Spotify to get that done as soon as possible because as Andreas said uh, earlier on, there's a big opportunity for doing business for them here yeah. in Latin America and in Colombia, as well as for the Deezer people, you know, this is something that they, th that it's been talked about ever since the streaming platform started getting here, but we don't really know how to go about, you know, doing it because the regulations here all pertain to uh, terrestrial radio royalties and execution royalties and right. all, all the traditional media royalties and rights that come along with, you know, offering music uh, services on the radio or on video. Yeah. But in terms of what's going on commercially, it's it's still a bit blurry. You know, the, the lines yeah. are very blurred. So once Spotify gets on the ball with this and once uh, Andreas gets, you know, that ball running and going in uh, Europe, I think it's just a matter of time bec before, you know, it, it gets here in Colombia. Yeah, sure. And uh, uh, Andres, I wanted to ask you about the, of course, the international rollout. Of course, uh, I mentioned that you are available in Sweden right now. Uh, do you think there's going to be some, some roadblocks as far as uh, how the commercial license works in different countries, or is it fairly uh, exportable in a, in a fairly straightforward manner? I mean, obviously, we didn't start this company to be in Sweden alone. Right. And um, we, of course, like to follow the Spotify footprint. Uh, that being said, uh, Spotify is now a seven, eight-year-old company that has learned a lot and is now highly operational. There are in 56 countries and 10 million subs. Yeah. We, we just started. So we're very humble to the fact that we need to uh, learn the model in Sweden and perfect it before we start exporting it. So we're very the, the wary about that. Um, also, at the same time, what we see in, in the, the, uh, the background music line Licensing is a very fragmented market. Uh, the distribution technology of background music, uh, I hear two-thirds of all background music in the world is still being served by CD or satellite radio. Right. And when we look at the licensing models compared to the consumer service that you can license almost globally, and it's almost like a streaming license available now that almost any company can get, yeah. more or less. <laughs> uh, on, the, on the B2B side, that's very fragmented. You almost have to do it country by country. So prices vary and the licensing bodies vary country by country. Yeah. So it's going to be really interesting to sort of both grow the market and also mature the market from a lot of different perspectives actually. Absolutely. And of course, uh, I, I, I'd want to clarify just in case people were confused or they're listening to this, uh, that uh, uh, the usual rates uh, for the collection society still apply. So if, uh, if you guys were to launch in the UK, of course, uh, the shops would still have to pay the PRS and, and the PPL for their, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, rights that they, they need to be paid for uh, on top of the subscription. Is, is that correct? That is absolutely correct. So the performance fee still applies and the mechanization fees is the way we cover on our end. That's great. Awesome. And uh, uh, yeah, I mean, it's a real pleasure talking to you today and uh, hopefully we'll hear more uh, from you guys soon. Actually, the last thing I wanted to ask you was uh, around the, the funding of the company. So uh, you got some pretty heavyweight, uh, you know, companies involved, uh, Crandon, Wellington and North Zone, as well as Spotify. So how did you find the environment for uh, uh, looking for funding? Of course, you know, the Spotify connection probably helped, but uh, how do you find that process? It's always demanding to raise, to raise funds, e even though you start with, uh, with, with some good cards in your hand. Uh, I think Ola and I are not the youngest founders on the planet. Uh, 
so we definitely got that going for us and the background of Spotify definitely helps and, and Ola's Beats background helps as well. But still, you need to pay your dues and you need to prove your business case. Um, I think that background music is hugely interesting, especially if you're connected to the fact that the brand investments in the world are somewhere around $550 billion. Right. So if you can tap into that, I think we can do good for the music industry. And I think that's what, what our investors saw, saw as well. Yeah, and uh, it makes very, a lot of sense also to uh, to expand on the Spotify ecosystem, um, going in after new money instead of uh, perhaps shifting market share within the Spotify ecosystem. Absolutely. So they f- they found that very interesting. So um, that's what they invested in. That's great. Well, uh, thanks so much, Andreas, uh, again, and uh, go and check out uh, the company. Uh, I'll throw the links in the show notes. Uh, it was a real pleasure talking to you, and I'm sure we'll hear a lot more about uh, this in the coming months. As do we. And uh, I want to stay on Spotify for a couple more minutes because, uh, as Andreas uh, mentioned, uh, the company revealed just about five hours ago uh, the first, uh, for the first time, the subscriber numbers since March 2013. So uh, the last time we 